Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler, and today we're going to be talking about uh, this blog article that came out, the important update to Microsoft Power BI pricing. So I'm sure there's a lot about a lot of people out there like, oh, of course, Greg, Greg Greg's going to go off about evil Microsoft and how much they're price gouging everybody and and everything else, uh, you know, and go off on a huge rant about this. But that that's actually not the case. Uh, in fact, I wasn't even planning on doing a video about this announcement, except that I kind of got called out uh, about it. So for example, Georgie called me out, I can't wait for the ine inevitable Microsoft video or video from Greg about this matter, right? And uh, Alexander, uh, he uh, yikes, you know, hey, Greg Deckler, now they have enough money to hire a developer to fix table matrix te measure totals. So that's always hilarious. You know, it's a joke that keeps on giving, right? Um, but so I wasn't actually going to make a video about this, uh, but got to give the fans what they want. Um, and the reason I wasn't going to make a video about this is because really I don't care um, like about this, right? It's Microsoft software product, and you know it, this is a capitalistic society uh, that we have in the United States. Um, they they have a right to make money off of you know and price their product about what the market will bear and blah 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 and all that sort of stuff. So really, I mean, I, to me, this is just not really something to talk about, and you know, I, it's, except I do have some thoughts about this that I will get into, and some of it. And I, you know, there's an, I can think I'll be able to show pretty convincingly like this is pretty kind of, that is essentially is price gouging by Microsoft to a large extent. But there, I, I don't think that's the reason behind it. Uh, there's a, there's a method to the madness, which I'll explain. Um, but the interesting, so the first thing, uh, so let me talk about um, how similar this is to what happened with Microsoft 365 licensing, right, a couple of years ago, right? So even the announcer, like a decade of innovation, right? That's how it starts out, that that's the first heading. Well, if you look at you know new pricing for Microsoft 360, a decade of continuous innovation, right? So, um, and it goes on and explains and tries to justify you know why they're hiking the prices up and everything. And at the end, they give the new pricing, right? So um, they they make you scroll past all the justification for it before they they tell you how much they're jacking the price up. Whereas Kim kind of I think this wasn't a very smart move, you know, because nobody's going to read past. Oh my God, they're they're hiking my price up by four bucks. You know, that's what everybody's going to. And then nobody's going to read your justification, you know, that that, you know, why you're doing it or anything like that. So that's kind of a bad call, I think, uh, you know, in terms of. But they, as far as the format of them is almost identical otherwise. Um, and of course, there's some BS marketing going on here. So like this right here <laughs> in the last six years, alone, we've launched more than 1500 updates across our Power BI portfolio. OK, so the problem that Microsoft has is that there are people like me that actually know the facts about this um, and can basically, you know, take this marketing statement and just, you know, rake it over the coals, right? So I, what I have at my disposal is this. This is my Power BI releases where I scraped all of the feature releases for every Power BI update uh, for, you know, back to 20, 2019. Um, and 20, 2024 is not fully complete. I have I have to still have to update and get that data in there. Um, but if you just take a quick look at this, right? It's about 200 on average, let's say about 250 um, features that are released you know, per year, right? So if we take 250 times six, voila, see, there's where we get the 1500 number. Now, the problem is, is that if you look into it a little bit closer, so well, almost 100 of the, the, uh, the, so the visuals in the connectivity, right? Those are almost exclusively third parties. Right, third parties that are you know doing the work here, not Microsoft, and that's about forty percent. It's, it's very consistent um, over all the years, right? In terms of it, all adds up to like again, it averages around between the two numbers of right, right around a hundred, a hundred of those features, right? Um, oh, that's reporting. So sorry, visuals is actually sixty-eight. It's even larger in connectivity. So that's like you know, there's one hundred fifteen uh, right there, or hundred, you know, yeah, one hundred fifteen. So it's very consistent across that. That means that forty percent of the stuff that Microsoft is releasing, is releasing isn't even Microsoft, right? It's third parties that are doing that. Um, so may, this is kind of a BS marketing statement right here, kind of the, a lie, if you will, um, that they're trying to make it seem like Microsoft's doing a lot more work on the product than what they actually are. This number should be about 40% less in terms of Microsoft, what Microsoft is actually doing. Um, and I think it's, you know, so then let's now take a look at the price increase, right? So if you look at the price increase, uh, of these right here, they all range around between like 10% to the maximum is about 25% in terms of what Microsoft 
jacked up the prices of these all their products and stuff. And they all fit fall right in that same range. Right. So and then if you actually look at PPU, if we bring up our, our calculator again, right? You take four divided by 20. I know it's like 1999 or whatever it is, but you get 20%, right? Which falls right into that range. But take four divided by 10, and all of a sudden, for some reason, Power BI Pro, they jacked it up 40%. So the question is that my mind, where my mind goes is why? And I think the why is that basically that Microsoft Fabric is a total and abject failure and Microsoft's trying to prop it up. And maybe you're like, what, Greg, how do you make that leap of, of logic? Well, you have to kind of take a look at it and say, has, has Microsoft added 40% more value to Power BI in the past 10 years? And my argument would be for the most users, for the vast majority, absolutely not. Right. For the vast majority of users, they're still using Power BI to create tables, right, in reports, you know, based upon probably 80% of them, 70% of them are single table data models. So all these fancy features that Microsoft has added, like composite data models and everything else, this is kind of useless to the vast majority of people using Power BI. Um, you know, they, and we still have the same crap visuals that we've had for the last 10 years. Right. I mean, Microsoft's added a few like KPI, you know, key influencers and these other visuals that are kind of fun to play with, but nobody actually uses them in the reports. Right. And they've added, you know, Power Apps visual and a Power Automate visual. And again, those are kind of fun to play with, but nobody actually really uses those um, in the vast, vast majority of reports. Right. I would say probably 90% of the reports out there just use base, your base crap visuals that Microsoft Power, Power BI Desktop has always had. Um, and the same, you know, basic features that Microsoft Power BI Desktop has always had. So I would say that for the vast majority of people, they're not getting, you know, it's not 40% more valuable, you know, than it was when they first started using it. Um, maybe I'm incorrect about that, but that's my opinion. So and you also, also have to say, well, why does PPU only go up by 20% and all the other Microsoft products only go up by like, you know, 15% on average and that sort of thing versus Power BI Pro. Power BI Pro specifically is like more than double that number of the, the average number of things, what things are being increased on. And the only explanation that, that I can think of is that, again, Microsoft Fabric has been a net loser for Microsoft, right? And I've been talking about this, you know, like, where is Microsoft picking up new licensing for Fabric, right? Because all your premium customers that were using Power BI Premium, they're going, okay, they're going to flip to, you know, F64 SKUs, right, or higher, right, F64 plus SKUs. You know, in Microsoft, you know, one, didn't give them the option to, you know, otherwise they would have all stayed on their, their previous premium SKUs. You know, Microsoft literally killed the product, killed the product, right? And forced everybody to go to F64 and plus SKUs. And, that's, and then Microsoft never retires SKUs. Um, you know, it's just a, such an anomaly. Um, but, you know, so, so that's not adding additional revenue from Fabric. And all of these people that are using Power BI, using Power BI Pro and PPU, right? I mean, are they suddenly going to, you know, they're, it's servicing all of the needs that they needed to do, all of their reporting needs, all of their semantic models. Are they suddenly going to say, oh, look, I can create a data warehouse or a lake house or this other, you know, this other thing over here or write Python scripts now, right? Is that, you know, they're really we're using it for reporting. Like they don't care about all those features, right? And so with Microsoft and then all these people that are, are already standardized on Databricks or Snowflake and all that, they're not going to suddenly like, oh, we need to spend, you know, $6 million to then re-engineer all our stuff on Fabric. That doesn't make any sense either. So where is Microsoft picking up new Fabric net new fabric licensing revenue. And the, the simple fact of the matter is they're not, right? And so they're going to force the issue. And the way they're going to force the issue is by lowering the tipping point for when you want to go pro versus F64, right? So if we take and say $5,000 a month for a Power BI Premium P1 SKU and the equivalent F64 SKU, and we divide that by $10 per user per month, right? We get 500 users. 500 users is the break point for when you want to go and flip over to Microsoft Fabric um, or Power BI Premium was previously Power BI Premium. But now that, that whole dynamic changes, now if we do 14, now you're down to about 350. So basically if you're over 350 seats of Pro, then now it suddenly makes sense for you to go in an F64 plus SKU, right? So that's where Microsoft's going to start to gain some licensing revenue from Fabric, in my opinion. Fabric's been such a failure in that regard that Microsoft is, you know, they're just jacking the price up of Power BI Pro to force users to go into Fabric and start using Fabric. That's my theory in terms of, and I think it's the only thing that makes sense. Um, the interesting thing about all of this is that 
your E5, your Microsoft 365 E5 SKU did not go up, right? So, you know, if they're trying to make the argument that Power BI, they, you know, has gone up in value this much, 40%, and so that justifies, you know, increasing it from $10 to $14, like they didn't change the E5 SKU one iota, right? It still costs like, like 54 bucks. Um, versus like 33 bucks for the E3, you know, Office the Microsoft 365 E3 SKU, right? So now the question I guess you could you could ask yourself is, you know, if they're going to increase my price by four dollars and I get literally nothing out of it compared to what I was getting out of it for ten dollars, right? At least maybe it makes more sense for people to go instead of going to you know just paying that and just taking it. Like maybe it makes more sense to pay the extra seventeen dollars to go from like an E three to an E five. Um, at least you're getting something out of it, like better security and things like that, versus literally getting nothing, right? You know, they're just going to charge you more for it. Um, so anyway, that's my theory. I think uh, Fabric has basically been a complete loser and a failure for Microsoft in terms of generating net new licensing revenue. Um, so they're just going to force the issue. So that is it. That's all I had for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.